Thank God for the youth this morning. Thank you for the youth. I'm saying also, I'm kind of partial to the youth. I love them and uh, know they're our future. And really thank God for the song they sang this morning. Thank God for what I can feel in that song. And uh, that's what it's really all about. It's about him. It ain't about me. It ain't about you. Uh, and it ain't about what I like. It's not about what you like. And if we could ever get together on that, we could worship and praise God. And so he's worthy of our praise this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank God for it. Them singing. Anybody else got a song? Anybody? All right. If not, be much in prayer this morning. Um, if you have your Bibles, then turn to this book of Genesis. Um, we're going to read some scripture today in hearing. Want you to be much in prayer. Um, that God will just help us today. Excited about the service today. Excited about Sunday school. What took place in there? Excited about what God's doing in my life. What about you? Excited about. Salvation, excited about the home that's waiting on me, and excited about the promises that God's made to me. And uh, I'm just excited. Can you tell? I'm just excited to be here this morning. I um, want you to be much in prayer. Book of Genesis, 6th chapter. I'm going to read some scripture that uh, you've probably heard me read before. Um, I've probably preached about Noah um, as much as anything I've ever preached about, but I've never preached what I'm fixing to preach. So I, I want you to be much in prayer. That's the good thing about um, the Word of God. It is a living book. Um, it's something that's alive and it's something that um, doesn't matter when you pick it up or where you're at when you pick it up. If you'll open your heart, you'll get something out of it. And a lot of times it's not something that um, you've ever saw before. So that's the good thing about this book that's in front of me right here. Um, it's living today and it's alive. And so uh, I want you to be much in prayer. Um, I was trying to prepare and last night I was at the house and um, I had a bunch of uh, old men come to my house yesterday, some deacons. Ed and Bobby says they're not old, but they, they're getting there. Uh, come to my house yesterday and kept me all day long, so I didn't have time to get ready. I'm just kidding, really. But um, I was at home last night and been trying to prepare and trying to get ready, and um, God laid this message on my heart, and I had something totally different than I wanted to preach today, just to be honest. And uh, I thought, God, that has nothing to do. Um, we preached last Sunday about when Paul said that if our gospel was hid, it was hid to them that were lost. And um, I told you at the end of that we would probably be in that trend and be going that direction for the next few weeks and, and God laid this message on my heart last night and I thought to myself God that has nothing to do with what I told them and I know. thought I told them what you wanted me to tell them and, and I went to bed thinking about that and I didn't sleep any, I rolled and I tossed and I tumbled and I turned I got up this morning and got in the shower and um, God just spoke to me about three words and then it all come together and so um, if I just be smart enough to listen to God, everything I got a lot more sleep, just to be honest. So um, I think we find our, our, all of ourselves in that position. If we just listen to God, Rick, how much easier and how much simple life would be for us today? I, I want I want to read to you some scripture about a man that listened to God, and um, I want you to apply it to you. Sixth chapter, of the book of Genesis. I'm going to read one verse, the twenty second verse. Um, that's what God's laid on our heart today. Sixth chapter. Genesis verse 22 says, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. That's all I'm reading today. I, I want you to pray. Um, leave your Bibles open because I'm going to go back through some of this in a few minutes as God leads us that way. Um, I, I was getting ready this morning. God spoke to me. And, and I preached last Sunday about, and, and to be honest, I left here thinking to myself, God... Um, did, did we get it? Did they get it? Did As a church, did we get what you gave me? And uh, God spoke to me and He said, absolutely. And uh, God don't say a whole lot, but what He says, He means. And, and so uh, I began to think about that this week and, and been praying about that and, and talked to some of you this week. You called, you texted, just different things. And uh, uh, I want you to uh, realize this today. God wants to bless our church today. It's not a question. If God wants to, God does want to. He wants to bless me. He wants to bless you. And He wants us to enjoy the benefits of being a child of God. Do you believe that today? I, I really do. I believe God wants me to enjoy my salvation. And I, I believe God wants me to enjoy being a Christian. And, and I, I want you to know this. We've lived to a day and time um, to where this world that we live in today, there's not a lot of joy in it. There, there's not a lot of peace in it. 
And, and there's not um, a lot of people that, uh, that are enjoying what God's gave us and, and put us in the creations, what I'm referring to. Um, we're not really enjoying that. We're, we're out there living in the world and the world's doing the things they're doing, but they're not enjoying um, what God's gave them. The reason they're not is because they don't have that salvation. They don't have that uh, God-given gift and, and that home and that promise in heaven. And so uh, I want you to be much in prayer today. I'm going to share with you something this morning that um, the text or the uh, topic is going to be courage today. And I, I thought, God, how in the world am I going to tie all this together? Well, um, God spoke to me this morning. He said, Derek, it's not so much that um, the church don't want to do what I want them to do. And it's not so much as they want to hide the gospel. That's not what they intend on doing. But um, they're fearful about it and they're not comfortable with it. So it's this big light bulb come on. Is that us? I think that's probably everybody that's here this morning. It's not that we want to hide what God's done for us. And it's not that the gospel's the good news, right? It's not that we intend on hiding that, Keith. We're just fearful about it. It's not... Um, very comfortable. But I want you to think about what courage really is. We read in the Bible about you know all these great men and women of God that accomplished something with God's help. It took some courage to do that. I, I think about Paul when he um, was before Agrippa and when he talked to the Sanhedrin and when he um, did a lot of different things. The last time he went to Jerusalem and just a lot of things. Paul had to have a great amount of courage to do that because uh, courage is when we let something, a driving force, overcome us. And we let that force, we let that power, we let it overcome our fear and we let it overcome the part about us being uncomfortable and, and we let it overcome all that and we step out on faith. Did you ever think about that? Uh, courage is when we let faith overcome our doubts. Think about that today. Um, I thought about uh, Noah here and I'm going to preach about Noah and I want you to pray. Uh, the Bible said that everything was getting rough in the world that God looked and that he repented that he never even made mankind. In other words, God looked at it and said, what a mess this is. Uh, you know what? I, I wish that I wouldn't even have made man. Now that's the Bible. I'm going to preach you the Bible today. That's how um, angry and frustrated that God got with mankind. Keith, there was things going on that uh, probably just like today. Do you see anything going on today you think that would make God angry? I see a lot of things today that uh, that's going on in the world today that would make God angry. And so uh, I'm glad today we have Jesus. What about you? And I'm glad today that, you know, when God gets angry and gets upset with what He's creating, I'm glad that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father and that He's making intercession. That's what the Bible says, that He's making intercession for me and you. And I'm glad Jesus is our grower, uh, saying, you know what, they belong to me. I believe that me and you make God angry. How about you? I believe that when I fail and when I come short that we upset God. Now, you may disagree with me, but um, things have got rough. Let's focus on the message. Today. Things have got bad and things have got rough and God uh, repented that He ever even made man. But the Bible said that there was a guy there by the name of Noah. Have you ever tried to picture these Bible characters before and what they might have? We see paintings and whatnot. Uh, I see Noah, somebody kind of like Keith Rich, you know, a pretty good sized guy. Uh, but anyways, an upright man is what I'm trying to refer to. Somebody that had favor with God and, and through everything that was going on, God looked and through all that He saw somebody there by the name of Noah. And I'm glad He did. What about you? If God had never seen Noah, guess what? He would have watched everything, everybody, and me and you wouldn't be here today. That's just the way it is. But uh, Noah found favor in the eyes of God and found uh, grace in his side. And so um, God began to talk to Noah, and I'm hurrying. I'm going to get to the thought. God began to talk to Noah, and he said, uh, Noah, I want you to build me a boat, and, and I want you to get in it, and I want you to take your family, and I want you to take some animals. And uh, see, the hard part about this was it had never rained before up until now. Now, um, I want you to think about this. What if God, um, and it wasn't an easy task for Noah to build this boat. And so the first thing I would have said was, God, why do you want me to build a boat before? It ain't never rained. I don't even know what rain looks like. And so the Bible said that, uh, the Bible don't mention this, but I don't believe that Noah ever questioned God. Do you? The Bible don't say nothing about it. And so um, that's what courage is really all about today. When we don't question God and when we don't question 
question what God's wanting us to do and when we just take what God's gave us to do and we run and we go with it today. Do you agree with that this morning? Kind of like um, when God knocked at your heart when you was lost, it took some courage to get up and go, didn't it? Uh, see, that's the Bible said that without faith it was impossible to please God. Amen. So I think about courage, and, and the thing I want you to notice is not only um, get your mind past building a boat today, all right? Noah wasn't just building a boat. He was proclaiming the name of God. Now, I, I'm going to get into the message now. That's actually what God was doing, Keith Rich. He was proclaiming the name of God and who God was. Now, uh, I believe there was pre people in that day that were believing in God, and, and I believe that Noah was believing in God. And so this wasn't something new, but every Everybody kind of like it is today was just kind of pushing God aside. Do you see that happening today um, in our churches, in society, in our families? We just kind of push God aside. That's what people were doing in this day. And so God began to talk to Noah, and it took some courage for Noah. And I wrote this down last night in my Bible. I read this, courage is not absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fear. Now, I want you to think about that. Just because... The that you've got courage doesn't mean fear is going to leave, all right? It doesn't mean that everything, all the problems and all the obstacles and opposition is going to go away just because you get courage. But what it does mean is that you've decided that something is more important than the fear that you're feeling inside. Now, I want you to think about this a minute. The gospel that, that we're hiding from the lost and dying world, is it not more important than your fear today? And is it not more important than the need for the gospel to go out I, I want you to think about this what if these great men of God would have said you know what I can't preach your gospel God and I, I can't preach the word and I can't share what Jesus has done it's not comfortable and I'm afraid to do it what if they did that in that day guess what the gospel if Paul had not started preaching the gospel may have never got to the Gentiles and me and you might still be lost and on our way to hell today amen so is it worth it today? We've got to make a decision that we're going to have courage and we're going to be bold and we're going to share the gospel. See, Noah decided he was going to do that. See, you see over here in verse 13 that, you know, this is some, the thing about it. We should have courage today. Why? Because God has spoke to me. And you look at verse 13 today. It said, and God said unto Noah. Amen. That meant that God was speaking to him. That should get me and you fired up today. Amen. Because we've got somebody, Ed McCubbins, that's speaking to us today. Is God not talking to you today? Amen. Do you not hear God's voice in your everyday walks of life? Uh, I don't know about you, but if you're not praying and you're not spending some time with God, Keith Rich, I understand why you can't have no courage today. But guess what? When God speaks to me, it's kind of like uh, I talked to God before I came here today and I said, God, I want you to give me something today that lets me know we're connected and I'm taking us the right direction. And right here come Jessica up here with the children's church and begin to talk about Noah. I could have almost shouted when God did that today. That lets me know, guess what? I'm going full steam ahead. I'll just tell you people, we're going. I'm going to keep put, we're going to keep going. I'm not going to push. I'm going to lead. And we're going to keep going. And guess what? We're going to win the lost and we're going to make a difference in Granger County. And we're going to have courage and we're going to be bold. And not everybody's going to enjoy it. Not everybody's going to appreciate it. And some of the opposition will come right here but guess what God's going to bless us in spite of the devil why because if God's for us think nobody can be against us amen. amen we'll talk about opposition here in just a minute Noah had some opposition he had to face I've got some opposition I look out today and I see just a little bit of opposition but it's all right God's going to deliver amen because God had spoke to Noah he was able to have courage Keith because God's speaking to me and because God God speaks to you. We should be able to be bold and have courage about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I think about Noah. I go to verse 9. Over here, I, I look at verse 9. The thing about it is, Noah had the presence of God in his life. Amen. Verse 9 says that Noah walked with God. Amen. That means they had a relationship. That should give you some courage today. Amen. Have you got a relationship? Have you ever walked with God? 
Preacher, what are you talking about? I look around, I don't see Him. Let me tell you something. You can't see God, but surely you can feel God's presence in your life today. Amen? Surely there's not a day that you go through life that you don't feel God. Keith, somewhere in some fortune, in, in some way that you don't feel God. You know that warm feeling that comes over your body. And I, I've never shared this. So I'm going to share this. I um, had that accident the other day and, and went to the doctor. And they um, did a scan on my eyes. I was having these headaches and uh, a preacher friend of mine's my eye doctor and we got there and, and just to be honest he said Derek I don't like what I see I'm going to tell you about what God can do he said Derek I don't like what I see I'm pretty concerned I'm going to send you to a specialist immediately and I ain't told nobody this but that's all right I'm going to share with you what God done for me he said but Derek before you go he scared me and Manny did he said we're going to pray and I thought God this has got to be bad he wants to pray before we leave and so we got down there on the floor and we began to pray and I'm going to tell you people the truth we were praying and there was the warmest feeling I've ever felt in my whole life come over my whole body amen you believe that today preacher I don't believe that I'm telling you the presence of God was there and whatever happened God took care of it I have no idea and guess what I went back and he said Derek it's different now that's the way God works in my life Noah had the presence of God in his life because he walked with God amen are you walking with God today if you are you ought to be able to have courage today and be bold about the things you face in life. Amen. Preacher, that really happened? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know if anything was wrong or not, Rick, but I know I'm fine now. I feel better than I've ever felt. I give God the credit. Amen. God fixes things when we let Him. Look at verse 14 just a minute. What about the clarity of what God's done for us? He gave Noah some clear instructions. He said, Make thee an ark of gopher wood, Room shalt thou pitch, make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make in the ark, and in the cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door thou shalt set forth in the side thereof with the lower section. And the third stories thou shalt make it. See, God gave Noah some... Great instructions. They were specific, Grover. They were right to the point. He didn't just say, all right, Noah, go out there and just throw all that together however you want to do it. See, we've got some good instructions right here. I'm looking at it. Amen? We've got the Word of God, which is a road map to our lives today, Rick. We're not like a blind dog in a meat house today, so to say. We've got the map and we've got the instructions to get us through life. We ought to be able to have some courage about that today. Amen? We ought to be able to tell people about Jesus. Why? Because because we've got the Word of God with us today. Amen. You believe that? Derek, you're fired up today. Why wouldn't I be fired up? I guess y'all are going to think I'm always fired up, probably. You're probably getting used to it now. See, we're, we're kind of, we're warming up to one another, right? Ain't God good? My goodness, think about this. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that he wouldn't put more on us that then we were able to bear. In other words, he said, I'm not going to uh, put more on you than you're able to... Um that you're able to bear, but he said this, he said, whatever I put on you, able to be tempted. That's the word I'm looking for, tempted. He said, I'm not going to place more on you that you be able to overcome that, and you'll be able to overcome that because I'm going to provide you a way of escape. That's what he told. That's what Paul said. And so I want you to think about this day. We are to be able to have courage today knowing that God's not going to put no more on us, Keith, and we're able to bear. Amen? He didn't give Noah something to do right here that Noah couldn't do. Amen? Has he ever asked you to do anything you're not not able to do God ain't never put more on me than I was able to do God didn't ask Noah to do something that's impossible did he amen listen it's not possible for us to share the gospel amen it's not possible for us to go out and tell the people the good news we've got to overcome our fear and it's not comfortable amen it's not comfortable to approach people that don't know Christ and tell them it's not comfortable yet, but we've got that commission. Amen. Uh, I look at verse number uh, 10. Let's look at verse 10 just a minute. See, there's a lot of people counting on us today. It says, and Noah begot three sons. Amen. He See, he had some children. Y'all got kids. Some of y'all got kids. I'm hurrying. I know. I, everybody's getting tired and they're looking at their watches. And uh, I'm going to preach about that next Sunday. Don't worry. <coughs> <coughs> See, there's people that are counting on me and you. That should make you bold, amen? That should give you courage, amen? 
to know that there's people counting on you. See, that's what gives me courage this morning. I know you're counting on me. So I've got courage today, Bobby. I've got the good news that I'm going to tell everybody about. Noah had three boys, three Paxtons, or three Nicks, or three Tylers, or three Ricks, or three whatever. He had three boys that were counting on him. Amen. And he knew that they were going to count on him, and he knew that he had to be bold and have courage, and he knew that he had to do what God told him to do. Amen. That ought to make me and you have some courage today. There's people counting on you today. Amen? Marvin, Aiden's counting on you. Amen? It's just the way it is. Preacher, you're calling names. I love you, Marvin. Aiden's counting on you. Think about it. Our people are counting on us. The people we love, the people we care about, the people we cherish, they're counting on us today. Look at verse 8 just a minute. See, this right here ought to fire us up more than anything. My goodness. Verse 8 says this. Noah found grace in the eyes of God. If this don't fire you up, I don't know what will. We've got favor with God. How many people are saved by God's marvelous grace? <laughs> You've got favor with God. Amen. You've got that unmerited favor, that grace. Noah found grace. That's what made Noah have courage. Amen. He knowed God was on his side. Amen. Do you see the big picture now? Why we can't hide the gospel? God's on our side. Amen. You see now why we've got to tell others? Because God's on our side. Amen. Ain't he good today? Let's look at verse number 18. This right here ought to make you have some courage. We've got the promise of the future. This is what he said in verse 18. He says, talking to Noah, he said, Noah, he said, with thee I will establish my covenant. Hey, we know how this thing plays out, amen? I already know, Bobby. You ever started watching a movie and knowing what the end already was? I already know what the end of it is, Amen. I already know where I'm going to live. I already know where I'm going. I already know who's going with me. I already know all the tears are going to be gone. I know the drugs are gone. I know the alcohol's gone. I know all the former things are going to pass away. Does that not give you courage today, First Baptist Church? Does that not fire you up? Does that not light a fire in your bones that, you know, Jeremiah said, I'm not going to preach no more. I'm going to quit, in other words. But the Bible said there was a fire burned inside of his bones, and guess what? He just couldn't stay no more, could he? Don't that fire you up today? Knowing what mine and your future is, knowing about the covenant, knowing that Christ is coming back, are to fire every one of us up today. Amen? This is what gives us a hard time. I'm hurrying. During all this, during Noah's courage and during his boldness, and, and he had the instructions and he had found grace and, and Rick, God had talked to him. And, and through all that, we can all relate with that, right? But through all that, Noah had some opposition to overcome. Now, I want you to listen just a minute. Opposition comes in a lot of different directions. I feel a little bit of it right now. Opposition comes, and I don't know why I would. you know that? Why would you oppose the Word of God today? Amen. Why would you not appreciate the songs that I, well, they were singing that first song you young people were? And I looked over at Bobby, and I said, I don't know why anybody wouldn't like that song right there. Amen. I, I don't know. He's overcome the grave. Why would you not like that song? I love it. Amen. But there's always opposition. Satan is always trying his best to devour people. Amen. During Noah's boldness and his courage, Johnny, and, and everything he had going for him, guess what? There was people walking by, I'm sure, making fun of him. Amen? That's what keeps you, and that's what makes you hide the gospel. Amen? Because all those people that don't worship like you do, all those people that don't look like you, all those people that don't talk about things you do, and guess what? Sometimes opposition comes... Have you ever thought about Noah's boys? I thought about this. Noah's boys, they don't say nothing about it, but I don't believe they had no hammer in their hand, do you? Think about it. Sometimes opposition comes from somebody close. Amen? You think them boys ever doubted? Dads went crazy. He out there building that boat and it ain't never rained. I know what Tyler would say about you, Edward. Mom, Dad's lost it. Think about it. They thought Noah had went crazy. 
But guess what? Noah still did. What I read to you. said, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. So he did. God's commanded me and you to do some things. Nehemiah went back to build the walls back at Jerusalem. And there was some opposition there. They said if a fox runs up that wall, it's going to fall down. These people right now in our congregation saying some of this stuff's going to come to an end. This church is going to quit growing. It's going to quit. It's there, trust me. It's there. They say old negative naysayers. But guess what? I want you to look around here. If you are, look at all these people that's here today. I had a lot of fire in somebody, won't it? <clears throat> Why in the world would you not want to see God bless our congregation and bless you? I'm going to tell you why next Sunday, I hope. I don't want to get into messages here. We're coming to a close. God's gave me a great vision for our church and lit a great fire in me the last few weeks. And we're going places. I see you up ahead. But we're going to have some opposition. Noah had opposition. Nehemiah had opposition. Paul had opposition. Abraham had opposition. You think it was easy for Abraham when him and Lot were out there to separate and go to split ways? Wasn't easy. He loved Lot. Always going to be some opposition. But we've got to do, what about you, what about me? We've got to do, Johnny, we've got to do, we've got to do, thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. That's what we've got to do. We've got to do what God's commanded us. Amen? We know what the Great Commission was. So go and make disciples, baptize them, in the name of the Father, and go out. In other words, bring them in. Right? You got the message. Everybody with they stand. Preacher, I'm afraid to make an impact. Do you remember the message about the impact? Remember that, about making an impact? It ain't that you all don't want to make a difference. I know that, Bobby. It's that it's not comfortable. Right, Elsie? It's that my Sunday school teacher, which is wonderful. If you're missing Sunday school, I always take a minute to throw this in. If you're missing Sunday school, you're missing out on a great blessing. My Sunday school teacher, Mr. Bobby Williams, began to talk about our fear this morning that we had. And you know something? It is a fearful thing, the Bible says, to fall into the hands of a living God. We need to realize who we're serving today. It ain't Derek. It ain't Keith. It's God. And we need to realize whose church this is. This ain't Preacher Drummond's church. I ain't the first pastor you had, and guess what? I'm not going to be the last. It ain't my church. Whose church is this? I didn't hear you. Whose church is this? Y'all remember that next Sunday, all right? This is God's building right here. It don't belong to me, and it don't belong to you. Just because some things may not suit me or may not suit you, don't mean it still don't belong to God. Amen? Preacher, that's a mouthful. I'm excited about next Sunday, ain't you? I am. This belongs to God, don't it? We worship Him, the Bible said, in spirit and in truth. Noah had some courage, didn't he? I've got some courage today. Why? Because I know the presence of God's in my life. I know God spoke to me. And Keith, I know God's given me some good, clear instructions. Huh? Noah had a lot of reasons to have courage, didn't he? So do you. Amen? Are you going to share the gospel or are you going to hide it? While we sing, if anybody would like to come, this is an invitation I really want to give. I really want to extend. If you're here today and you'd like to get your zeal back. You know what I mean? Your zeal. I'm talking about that shininess in you. I'm talking about that joy in you. I'm talking about, you know what I mean? That, that part of you that somebody else would want, not that... Mm. I'm talking about that... You know what I mean. You want to get that momentum back. You want to get your courage back. That's what I'm preaching about today, your courage. See, having courage don't make fear go away. But courage is when you decide some things are important enough to overcome that fear. Is the gospel not that? Is your family not that? Is your children not that? Your grandkids your future, your church. While we sing, would you come?